Welcome everyone to the Rink Rat Report podcast recording this one January 17th, 722 p.m. And as always, joined by my co-host Jason. How's it going, guys? A lot has changed in a week, hasn't it? We a went from last changed. episode, we were recording on the back of a four-game winning streak. Now we are on the four back of a four-game losing streak. One All point in the, in the last four Gosh. games. One point. Yeah, not it's good. not been fun. <laughs> not good. Not good. And I've been uh I've been tracking. Um I've kind of been tracking, paying attention to like the on DraftKings, the odds uh for the Leafs to make the playoffs. And it's starting to get to a concerning level for me here. Just popping over to DraftKings right now to see what the price is. Uh I believe it was I think it's the lowest, honestly, I've ever seen it in a long time. If you had to guess, what do you Probably think the since price is? Probably 1920. <laughs> no, seriously, since this team's been good, it's actually plus 425 for them to not make the playoffs. There's an implied probability of around 25%, 24%, 20-ish percent. So, I mean, I can't remember the last time the Leafs were implied yeah. to be at around 20% to make the playoffs. So, it's a little concerning for me right now. Mm-hmm. And when you take a look at the standings right now, They have one game in hand on Detroit and are only up by one point. Detroit plays the Panthers right now. They could be, you know, you're going to open the score mobile app and tomorrow and it's going to be, it's going to say Detroit. It could say Detroit above the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Leafs being in a wildcard spot. I mean, there are two games, two games in hand on Tampa Bay, one point up and one game in hand on the Red Wings, one point up. They've really pissed away a decent lead. They were two points up and I think four games in hand on Tampa Bay. And now yeah. we, we've kind of dwindled it down. And this is the time of the year where you do have to start paying attention to standings. We're halfway oh. through the season. We're exactly halfway through the season. A hundred percent. And I like said it earlier on in the season that like, I don't care where they are in the standings. Cause like, like you said, it doesn't really matter when there's 10 games in and they're out of a wild card spot. They're not in the, like it's 10 games. Now we're getting a large sample and now the points are starting to add up here. And I know people are going to say, well, they mattered before. No, like that's not really how it works. I don't know. Uh, so like every point yeah, like, matters. Sure. But every, of course, 82 but two games. Exactly. You can't just microscope in on, on, yeah. the, on the first five games and be like, we're fucked if we're out of the playoffs. Sorry. I shouldn't have sworn. Yeah. But uh, you lose one game. It doesn't matter. Whatever. When you lose what they went on a four game skid, three game skid, three game skid, skid. Because one, this two. is the, this is the first time actually the Leafs have lost four games in a row. Close. since 2020 yeah. October, 2021. And that was the game where they beat. That was the game. It was early in the season. The first seven games where they were really struggling. I believe they didn't. Or Matthews oh, came the- back. Was it Matthews came back Double season? Uh, yeah, he was hurt for the first three games or something like that. Came back and they lost four games. Then they played Chicago. Oh, October then, 2021. Yes. And then yeah. they ended yeah. up having the best season of their of the team's Franchise history. existence. Yeah. So even though they had like their goaltending was a, goal a sight was. to be seen. But earlier, so what my point was, mm-hmm. you know, points, games kind of matter when it's a collection of them. Before yes. they went to California, they lost five of six games. They earned themselves three points in that time. And I said, okay, it's a skid. That's a skid. You're playing some good hockey. You're not playing miserably. You can pull yourself out of it. Boom. You win four in a row in California. Okay, awesome. Three out of those four games were against garbage teams. Well, three games in California, one at home. Three out of four against totally garbage teams. Who cares? They go and they play the Islanders. Islanders are all right. They're fighting for a playoff spot. Their defensive numbers have been terrible this year. You go up 3-1. Things are looking swimmingly. Season's looking up. Hopes are looking up. Boom. You blow it. Hmm. Okay. Whatever. The PK was awful. You you played very well at 5-on-5, though. You couldn't buy a power play, it seemed like. You got so unlucky, in fact, that Austin Matthews got tripped and then he trips Matt Martin directly after that. And then he's called on that one. And then they oh, score. Crazy. Right. So you could, okay, a little bit of back and forth there, whatever. Colorado game. Colorado comes into town. What happens? You're expecting oh, the big bad avalanche. Got a good team. Won a cup recently. The Leafs go up three nothing. 
three nothing in the first. Are you kidding me? Like, is this real life? Okay, we're back. All right, that was a little blip from the Islanders. Let's go. Three nothing after the first period. Boom. It's three two at the end of the second, and then you lose the game. Okay. All right. The Red Wings roll into town. The Red Wings, to add this caveat, apparently spent the whole day in an airport. They could barely fly into Toronto. They had to move the game. They showed up an hour and a half before the game. They showed up in their track suits because they had to, they were rushing, they were scrambling to get in. Okay. They the Leafs start miserably. I don't understand. Oh, we're on the back, second half of a back to back. That's why we started. What do you think the Red Wings were doing last night? They played the Kings in Detroit. You're at home. You had all day to prepare and you got outplayed in the first period with power plays? That didn't sit well with me. Okay, it doesn't matter. Going into the third, they're up 2-1. What happens? You lose. Again. Again. I understand it was an unlucky goal, but it's okay. Lost three in a row now. This is this is okay. Been kind of getting gut punched here. And then boom. You roll into Edmonton. You go up to nothing. You get a lucky break. You get a lucky break. The Hyman calls the Hyman goal is called back by half an inch, even though you're playing. I don't know what kind of defense that was on the Hyman goal, but it gets called back, so it doesn't matter. You're up two nothing in Edmonton, sitting pretty, looking good. They lost again. If you are someone that just falls asleep in the third period, you would have thought the Leafs are on a fucking great roll right now, because they had up until for two thirds of all these games, they've been winning. They've been playing great hockey. What is going on in the third period? They have not scored a goal since the San Jose game. Is that not correct? They didn't score a third period goal against the Islanders. They didn't score one against the abs. They didn't score one against the Red Wings. They didn't score one against the Oilers. And not only that, they're not getting any chances in those periods. You know what? The one chance that I have off the top of my head, Austin Matthews wraparound hit the post. Okay. That Detroit game, sorry, I forgot to go in on them more. James Reimer, one of the worst goalies in the league, was playing for Detroit. And you scored two goals on him? That's, mm, I don't know about that one. So the only chance I can think of from the third period is a David Camp breakaway last night. That's it. So this is like... (laughs) They were getting slapped. I'd almost feel better about this. This is just For the, sure. This is just terrible. <laughs> Why yeah, are they no. not only not playing defense very well in the third period, not playing offense? The offense just goes out the window, it seems like, in the third period. So it's been frustrating to say the least. Yeah, and that's uh yeah, it's it's been a weird little stretch here. And it sucks because I think last night they actually played well. Like against the Oilers, I thought it was a good game. I thought both teams played well. It's just they, but the problem is, is that before they weren't playing well, right? Like the the Red Wings game, they should have won. You can't lose to a team that literally is just coming off the plane. You can't lose to the Islanders the way you lose to the Islanders there, right? Um, I think the Avalanche game got out of hand. It's tough because again, I'm not going to get mad when we lose to good teams. Uh, it's just not good how we get mad when you blow a three nothing lead. Yeah. You know what? That's fair. That's fair. So, um, you blow a three nothing lead. I don't like, what is TJ Brody doing on the, on the penalty kill? Just, I understand you're leaving the puck. Oh, we got to delay it. We don't want the five on three for longer, but like, you can't just give them the puck. Like that was, and I, I think that's the most interesting thing of this season right now. And like maybe the most underrated storyline, the focus has always been on like Marner, Nylander, Austin Matthews, John Tavares, not playing well, more, whatever it's on all the core four players, but the focus right now should actually be on TJ Brody because his fall from grace as a borderline, like number, like I don't want to call him a number one, but a high end, like elite defensive defenseman, his fall from grace has been massive. Like it's yeah. completely underrated and not talked about right now among Leafs nation that like, no, that's, one of the biggest problems we're facing is that he's mm-hmm. fallen off okay. yeah. almost exponentially. And we have no one to like really replace the minutes that he used to give for us here. So I think that's like a major, major problem on top of that. Like I'm not going to throw the, throw the goalies under the bus over this last stretch, but just throughout the season, we obviously haven't had good goaltending here, right? We've had very hot and cold goaltending. So um, it's not like we've like, 
we're relying on our third goalie right now, right? Martin Jones, we didn't expect, we expect him to play min maximum five games beginning of the year. It's, it's not what it is right now. He's, he's, he's our guy right now. Hopefully Joseph Wall can get healthy. Hopefully he can come back after the all-star break, but it's, it's, it's getting to a weird spot right now and there's problems and the problems are apparent. And I think people are focusing on the wrong things. And I, I'm kind of scatterbrained with this, but uh, I know it's kind of going off topic here, but uh, yeah, yeah. Bro- Brody's the, you brought up Brody. He's yeah, been a mess the head with that one. Yeah, it's yeah. we documented why what happened this summer. Like, you're 34 years old. That summer was just emotionally draining. It had to be yeah. emotionally draining for him, right? So that's what and, happened. I don't like to. Yeah. I don't like to and it, brag on him, but yes, well, that as you mentioned, and you hit the nail on the head there. That's been the biggest setback. Like, okay, Tree Living came in. He didn't address the defense. Okay, but. We didn't think the defense needed addressing as much as it did. It yes. did need addressing. You brought in John Klingberg and that failed. Like you weren't yes. able to play him in a third pairing sheltered role. You tried to play, play him second pairing. He got rinsed and he got bonitis and now he's not playing <laughs> hockey anymore. So then, okay, then you got Riley Brody and then, okay, maybe McCabe Lilgren. Okay, Lilgren goes down and then, Giordano goes down, but doesn't matter. Giordano hasn't been playing very good hockey. Why? Well, he's 40 years old. 40, yeah. So that's that's been like holes that have been poked. You thought, okay, last regular season, Giordano played solid. I thought he was pretty good. If he's going to be a third pairing guy, I'm all for it. I was all for it at the beginning of the regular season. He's taken a way bigger step back. And he broke his finger, and now it's, I don't know, hasn't looked good since, really. It never really it's it's been very very up and down for him but the brody like your first pairing defenseman taking that big of a step back has really really killed the leafs for and sure. now you're sitting in a situation you don't have that many assets to address at the um at the trade deadline and versus what you thought you had coming into the season you actually have less now so what's the play What's the what's the move? What are you gonna do, right? And yeah, it's there's there's no easy answer there. But I do want to say this. I do want to say this with regards to the last four games that what people are not really talking about here. The Leafs have kind of gotten a little bit unlucky. I realize in the Oilers game, mm. the luck was very very back and forth. Yeah, well, and that was well, off of some. Two- Two posts, right? Like a missed open net. And then, but also the Hyman goal, they literally scored. And it was like, it was offside, but also like, eh, you know. Evander right? Kane missed on an open net because yeah, I don't like, know. The, the Leafs line changes last night were beyond horrific. I highlighted on Twitter, got no attention. I don't just, Jake McCabe hits. That's all people like to see. But <laughs> I highlighted on Twitter, there was a change. Two guys went to the bench. One guy was coming off. I think it was Nylander. And, but two guys went to the bench. Four guys were in the defensive zone. And nobody came off of the bench. They waited. They waited. They waited. And then all of a sudden, Yarkrock came stumbling off the bench. And then the pass went to Nylander. But guess what? When the pass went to Nylander, there were six guys on the ice. Ref luckily did not call that. So you got a little bit of luck there. You got a little bit of luck on the Kane open net miss. You got a little bit of luck on the Hyman disallowed goal. But, and I will show you this very big but, and the word, uh, I guess, what would it be? Right, we, but? We can't, Adjective? We can't bring up, only, only, up OnlyFan models on here. No. You know that, right? <laughs> Not. Can you see my screen? <laughs> yeah, you're good. You're good. Go. To give everyone who works a corporate job a little bit of uh, amnesia, or not amnesia, what's the, oh, trigger word. There we are. Watch this play here. Like, is this not an unlucky play? That's an oh, open freaking net. D- dude, <laughs> look at this. He, he might be the, he is actually snake bitten this year. It's crazy. Boom, it's crazy. off the post. It's, You're it's, one inch from that game being two nothing right off the hop. That's really unlucky. Okay. On top of that, the Red Wings game to start the game, William Nylander. Off the middle of the bottom part of the bar and out. That was nuts. <laughs> How does that not go in? 
Like, you do have to talk about these little bounces here. And I will say, actually, in the Red Wings game, too, guess what? The Red Wings missed on some bounces. There were several open nets that they just flubbed on. They, they, they healed it or whatever. And then there was a... I thought this was the video for it. It turns out it's not. Anyways, ooh, I'm going to stop sharing. Anyways... Uh, what I was the I was hoping the next video was was William Nylander off the bar to start the second, like mm. so you've gotten some bars you have gotten some luck the other way too, um, but that's where like it, it's it's been such a coin flip in some of these games, outside of the third period the third period has just been awful 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 hockey like, yeah that so- that first the first line yesterday looked great great. They were in on the two goals. They factored yeah. in on the two goals that the, that were scored, right? Yeah. There was the math, Marner to Matthews. There was Marner from the point. Holmberg got a stick on it. Matthews got a stick on it. Riley puts it in the back of the net. And then on top of that, there was Matthews steal to Holmberg. That was a great one-time chance. There was Matthews down, uh, Holmberg steal, Matthews down Main Street. That was a good chance. Marner to Giordano. That was another good chance. That's three additional chances high danger chances with movement that you generated outside of the two goals that you scored. Where were they in the third period though? Yeah, no. And that's, and that's like maybe been, you're right. That's a problem. And I I think this is like kind of ties back to a question. So we didn't really talk about the adjustment and lines that we've seen over the past couple of days, but we have seen Sheldon Keefe in an effort to kind of, I don't know if it's to make right by this or if it was to make, uh, like to, to try and jolt the lineup, but it seems like this, that's what he's trying to do to uh, get the spark going. And just yeah. as a side tangent here, just to talk about these new lines and the effort that Sheldon Keefe has kind of done to try and uh, I guess, skid this skid or like deny yeah. the skid. I don't know what, what the best way to put it is, but first of all, I just want to say that Holmberg has been great on the top line. I think that's been a good addition. I think right, he yeah. looks, he looks like he fits and it's, it's cool to see because Hey, that's an, uh, again, we didn't really get to see this much over the last, five years but that's another player who's come up played through played his way through the system and someone who actually looks good and he gets promoted and he's Mm -hmm. getting rewarded which is important to see go ahead so to cut you off there why do you think like what do you like better holmberg versus nice i want to ask you this one i want to see if my I, I think Nyes is like kind of like a puppy on the ice, if this makes sense. He kind of gets oh, a little yeah. bit no, lost sometimes. Uh, and like, I think Holmberg is a little bit more responsible in, in the three zones in, in the sense that he will kind of, first of all, he's, a, I think he's more responsible, definitely more responsible in the defensive zone In the offensive zone. I think he doesn't play a similar game to Nyes where he's like, comfortable. No, not not, not, I don't want to say comfortable net front. That's not the right word, but Nyes is more comfortable being around the net and being like kind of that, imposing presence in front of the net, establishing body position, things like that. Pontus Holmberg seems to be like more of a, like he likes to find soft spots in, in, in the slot kind of, and find more yes. open space than to try and uh, space. get his way in there. That's, that's, that's the I think that's, thing to me. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Find space. Matthew Nyes is still learning this game. He's still young. Pontus Holmberg, I think is three years older than him, even though they were drafted very closely. I think within a year or two, whatever, Nice is still a 2002 born. He's still learning a lot. And you saw that a lot. Sheldon Keefe actually benched him last night in the third period. I don't think a mm. lot of people noticed that. And that's what caused line change issues because Cal Yarncroft didn't know when he was supposed to go on the ice. So he was stumbling out there late every single time and it caused some issues. But Matt, to get to the point, Matthew Nice doesn't create space, it seems like, out there. He's got great hands. He's a big body. Skates decently, I would say. I think he will be a very good player. He doesn't, he's missing things though in his game. Essentially, it's between the between the years. He doesn't create space very well. There was an opportunity off the rush yesterday. I sent I sent you guys this one. It was an, an yes, a zone yes, entry from yes, Nylander. Yes. And Nyes was kind of in front of him. And what I expect from a player when they're kind of they're they were like this, I would say, if you can see on on YouTube, what I expect from a player that's supporting the rush when there's two defenders in front of you is you try to take out the stick of one of the defenders. You kind of lift it, right? You go at one of the defenders and you try to you try to cross the player with the puck and you try to push back the defender and create a little bit of space for him. 
Nylander was looking for Nyes to cross over from him and take away that stick from, I think it was CC or Bouchard. And then, so then he can drive around them. Nyes just kind of just got mixed up, didn't move and got in his way. And it resulted in Nylander kind of like, oh, like rush opportunity lost. He had to pull up. And guess what? Nylander's, you know what? He's a good player. He set up, he ended up setting up a pretty good chance on that same cycle that Nyes kind of muffed up there. But we've seen like, and then on top of that, I think it was the second goal as well. He was pretty lost on the in the defensive zone there too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm we just trying to... I was trying sight to... of that because he's got physical talent. He's still yes. got a long way to go. Yeah, and and again, like it's still it still seems crazy to think that he still he has like what under under sixty career games under his belt. He has less than sixty yeah. career NHL games, including playoffs, under yeah. his belt right now. He he hasn't played anywhere close to a full season. It feels like he has when you watch him play because hey, like he's he's he looks good. Still has flaws. Every majority of players in the NHL have flaws, but uh, yeah, it's it's all about how he can improve it. And I think if they. I, I assume they're part of the reason why they're doing this is they feel like he might be too overwhelmed on the ice and kind of maybe giving him a smaller role might be a better uh, foot forward for him here. Do you, so sticking with the lines here, did you like moving off the first line? Did you like the second line from last night of the, uh, uh, of, of the Oilers, excuse me, uh, that we were rolling so there? Nice with- Tavares, Nylander. Yes. Um, it, listen, it led to getting him benched. Sorry. I meant, I meant the third line. Sorry, I meant the third well, the line. Third I was thinking line. of the Bertuzzi, Domi, Yarnkirk line. Well, I mean, their line, first shift, they looked unreal. But, I, I think, And I, I like thought them. that they were going to be feeding Yarncroft left, right, and center. <laughs> Let's go. This is going to be great. It was terrible. They did horrible up there. And they were on for a goal against, minus Yarncroft, funny mm-hmm. enough. But I don't know. Like The line juggling bothered me in the Detroit game. That's the one where I was like, why? What is the point of that? Listen, I understand you got to try new things. You got to try new things mid season. It's not, it's going stale a little bit. Why not try something else? Why are you putting Bertuzzi, Marner, and, and Mar, uh, Bertuzzi, Marner, and Domi together? They're all three of those guys are passers, number one. It worked. They passed the puck into the net, literally. Marner, high danger pass to Bertuzzi. Back, Bertu- high danger pass to Marner, who just passes it back into the net, it seemed like. So it, it worked in a way, but I feel like there wasn't a good flow. There wasn't continuity to the chances. There wasn't continuity to the the cycles or, or the puck possessions. They didn't really hem Detroit in their own zone enough. Um, and I feel like when you change the lines that drastically – and you have guys that aren't that familiar with one another, that it's not going to be, it, it, there's a good ch- chance that it's not excellent right off the hop. Why are you Why are you risking that? Why are you doing that in the latter half of a back-to-back? But th- then to just go, up, oh, didn't like it. Let's switch this shit back. Mm-hmm. Like that to me was really, really weird. Yeah. Well, especially you, switch, why yeah. wouldn't you want to take advantage of a, of a fucking team that spent the whole goddamn day in the airport? Yeah, I don't know, but also like, yeah, I I I don't know that that's that's like a, kind of my problem with the coaching decision. So like, okay, like let, let's close out the lines here before I get to the next question. I want to ask you what we were what what should the lines be going for? Back to normal, uh, like back to normal where you flip Holmberg with, uh, Nyes, put Nyes on that third line where Robertson slash Holmberg slash whoever is playing usually plays there with Domi and so Nyes Domi, uh, Nyes Domi Yarncrook. And then just keep that second line together, like we've seen for majority of the season with Pertuzzi. What What are your thoughts here on that? Oh, because I actually didn't. I didn't I, like. I know they nice. didn't play well last game. I, I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more runway on that third line, even though they kind. You know what? To now, do with Matthew Nice? That's a good just like, question. Yeah, yeah. I think you need to start playing him a little bit less. He also said he's exhausted. This is yes. his first time playing over forty games in a season. Yeah. Right. So. It, it, I wouldn't, you know what? This is going to sound crazy, but I would move McMahon up or Robertson up. One of the two, Mm. because both those guys are shooters, right? I would put them with a Domi Bertuzzi, something like that. Um, Like 
the issue is, I don't know, like just, the issue is then, well, Robertson Domi Yarncroft was okay. Maybe you reunite that. You could do that. Um, what was I going to say? It's 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 a tough it's a tough mix of players there. It's a yeah. tough players, and I don't know what the answer is. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep an eye. But on But I will say this: but... uh, the reason I mentioned McMahon, and I do want to post a video about this because I think there's sufficient evidence of this. McMahon does a decent job of getting himself space in the offensive zone. The issue is and why we've only seen it once against the Islanders. That one timer goal is because he has David Kampf and Noah Gregor as his line mates. Don't, both those guys don't pass the puck really. They're not really playmakers, right? When McMahon was with the Marlies, how many goals did he score off the bumper, off finding that little space in the bumper, making little adjustments here, there, get it, get open, get the puck, fire it on net, in the back of the net. He was very good at that with the Marlies. And we saw that skill come out uh, against the Islanders. I want to see if maybe we can unlock that a little bit. I'm not saying McMahon is playing crazy good where – you have to promote him. He's playing all right. He's playing decently, I would say. Um, but he has that skill. And the issue is that you now you have within the lineup is that you don't have enough net front guys and you don't have enough goal scorer guys. So that's where I, I if I'm Keith, why am I not putting Robertson, uh, giving Robertson more of a go? Right. I understand yeah. also you don't have enough guys that are good defensively, it seems like. I mean, yeah, and, and that's that's one of the things that Sheldon Keith kind of brought up in his uh in his post game presser is that he's mentioned that he can't really rely, doesn't have someone who he can rely on yet. So it's like a such a weird situation to be in because again, there's like this this kind of leads me to my next question, but just to preface this, like there was a good tweet from uh from uh who is it ineffective math mika mccurdy mm -hmm. it was just interesting to see it's just just showing if you're watching on youtube you can kind of see this it's just showing the uh um the distribution of when players play and the game state of of that so mm -hmm. what player utilization looks like when um when you're either holding a lead when you need to score a goal when you're tied late in the game this is usually i think late in the game here towards the third period and it, and it looks like in that top left quadrant where it says hold the lead there's not many players there it's kind of like a smorgasbord of who we're gonna get benoit seems to be the most trusted quote-unquote player according to this graph but when you look at it last year it was mccabe it was hall it was brody there was more people more of those d kind of clustered into that that range there more d that he could kind of trust here uh, and like the that seems like the only d he can trust are Benoit, McKay, Brody, and then Legison. Those aren't like Giordano slowly falling his way down the list. Lilligren, based on this graph, he doesn't trust Lilligren at all, honestly. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's speaks to one thing is that uh, Sheldon Keefe struggles with who he trusts and putting out there late. But then also, like he said that today, he doesn't know who he, who he can trust. Yeah, and that that's a problem. And so. This leads me to my next question. What I'm thinking is there's a lot of people saying fire Sheldon Keefe. What are your thoughts on this fire Sheldon Keefe train? Yes. Are, you, are you on it? Are you off it? Yes. Why are you on it? I don't like to talk about another man's job. Um, unless that man is Mike McCarthy, which they just fucking extended him. <laughs> like, I, I'm just having myself a week. When was the last time I watched one of my favorite teams win a meaningful game? Like when uh, not against the San Jose Sharks uh, or the the Washington Commanders, I I don't know. This is this is just terribly depressing. Now, when was it? This was the Kings, and that was the second. The second was 15 days ago. I haven't seen a good solid win against a good team in 15 days. Oh, what was the question again? Sheldon Keith. Sheldon Keith fired. Why do I not? I don't like talking about another man's job. However, yes, it is time. You need a new voice. You need a new, new something. I mean, like I feel like in hockey, like how many coaches last for this long? They get fired for one right or wrong. They get fired. A new voice comes in. New rah rah. New motivation. Right. Like I, I feel like that's kind of missing from the Leafs. And I wonder, like, Matthews, Marner, Nylander 
have gone through two coaches and they had one of them for a couple of years. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's time to, to make a change. Like I, 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 I don't know. So the, the longest tenured coach right now is John Cooper at number one, who started, who's been here for what is so. it? How many cup finals? 10 years. Did go to? Yeah. Right. Number two, Mike Sullivan, who's been around for, he won two cups, but eight years, Jared Bednar. Yeah. Rob Brendamore, just won a cup. Todd McClellan, and then Sheldon Keefe. So Sheldon Keefe is actually the sixth most tenured Todd coach. McClellan. Where's Todd McClellan? Oh, he's in uh, LA. LA. Uh, just he just a, just repo. a not nudge ahead of Sheldon Keefe here. He's hired the off season that just, uh, Buddy got fired. Um, Babcock got fired. So I agree with you. I agree. I think Sheldon Keefe should be fired, and it's not anything that like. I don't want to say it's not anything that he's done. It's obviously partially what he's done because yeah. but I, I agree with you. It's like you need a new voice in this room. And I feel like like people like to bring up Sheldon Keith's record as if that's a reason why he shouldn't be fired. And you know what? That's a fair thing to look at. But also, you have to contextualize that he's had literally some of the best players under his belt over that time frame, right? Like he's had some amazing, amazing players. He's had some amazing rosters to work with here. So it's not, I don't think that's really fair to bring that up. Number one. Number two. Some yeah, people because of him, they're me. winning. The, the the Cavs in 2015 or whatever, yeah, they won the championship not because of LeBron. They won because of Ty Lu. Yeah, exactly, right? So Right? They won because of Ty Lu. How long did Ty Lu last after LeBron? I don't, I don't know. know. That's just how it feel, what it feels like to me. Like exactly. You have Matthews, Marner, Nylander, and Tavares, who, you know, he's been up and down, but we've had him for his good years, right? Yeah. So if you don't have that good of a record with that elite core, then I'm like, then like, what are we talking about here? Exactly. And he should have been fired earlier, record. right? So I, again, it, people think that it's an overreaction. I disagree. He's been around for what is it, five, six years now. That's a long time to be a head coach in the NHL. Number one. Number two, I don't believe that head coaching has as much as an impact that people say it does in the NHL. Coaching obviously matters. The way you strategize the way you play tactically those things are important but those things change right like th those things sorry those things can still be implemented and i'm sure sheldon keith with the way that it seems like he likes to run this team and the way that the toronto maybe police like to run it as an organization they have multiple people providing input on these things so it's not just what sheldon keith is doing it's the staff as a whole i think the whole purpose of firing sheldon keith what it would do is the same reason why people wanted to trade x star player on this team they don't want to do it as like a, a because they think it'll make the team better. They would do it because it causes an emotional reaction to the room. And I think that's actually what you need. And I'm I'm very, very for that because I think it's a change that you can make that has little effect on the actual product that's going to be put out on the ice, but I, but but will affect the room affect the room emotionally, I think. And that's what mm -hmm. you kind of need. I think that's what you need. And I, I it sucks that Sheldon Keefe is the in this spot to be to do that. I mean, it doesn't suck because he's signed next year. So if he gets fired, he still gets to get paid. But exactly. still, you never want to hear about hear someone getting fired. But it's it's at the point now where it's like, does this team want to go out there and play for him? And I know this is like this is stuff that's unquantifiable. I don't like talking about stuff like like this. But I just think it's gotten to a point now where it's like, let's just get a new voice in here and see what happens because. Yeah. Exactly. There's no harm. There's literally no harm in trying. The team is not, trust me, the if we hire someone, put me behind the bench, the team is not going to play that much worse. Put anyone behind the bench, the team cannot would not play that much worse. They have enough structure yeah. throughout the organization with the assistant coaches that they have, with the, 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 the video coaches that they have, that they can still maintain and be a good team regardless of who is head coach. I just think they need a fresh face. I just think they need a new voice. Because again, you look on the... You look when they show on the bench. This might not be the best representation of things, but you look when they show Sheldon Keith talking players on the bench, and I see player after player after player. Maybe they're listening to him, but they seem kind of disinterested in what he has to say. That's what I've seen this year. I might be wrong about that. I don't know. What, I don't. I have no idea about the inner workings of the, that room. I have no idea what's going on. We have, no, we have no idea of the inner workings of pro hockey. Like it's just speculation on our part. There, just commenting on it the best we can. Uh, I will say this. I'm seeing some people say fire Mike Van Ryan saying, Oh, the defense got so much worse when he got here. Is that causation or, or correlation there? That's like saying, Oh, there was a lot more goals when players were smoking cigarettes and now there's less goals in the NHL. So players Smoke need to start more smoking cigarettes. more cigarettes. Yeah. The D got a lot worse. I don't know what to tell. Like, 
what is Mike Van Ryan going to strap, put the skates on and put the shin pads on and get out there and block some shots. I don't understand how you can look at the defense now versus last year and say, Mike Van Ryan, that's what, that's what changed. TJ Brody took two steps back. Giordano took two steps back. You don't have uh, a nice seventh defenseman in Rasmus Sandin coming in. Like last year they had like, I don't know. They had who? They had Riley. They had Brody. They got McCabe later on. Um, they had Sandine. They had Logren. They had oh. Justin Hall. And there was probably one more. I can't remember who. doesn't matter. But you get my point. The defense got worse. This is not a Mike Van Ryan. Like, yeah. And, and I, I, know, I also argue that the defense that we've brought in who were expected to be okay, John shit. Clinton. Right, okay, oh, simple than John Benoit. Clinton. Benoit and Legacy have, have been r- refreshing look for the team, I think. So, yeah, that's kind of a weird thing to pin on him. They've been about as good as they could, right? Yeah, I, I'm just... Yeah, you know, I'm, like I'm, you, you put the temporary car tire, you put the temporary tire on the car. That doesn't mean you should go and drive all the way to California, do a cross country trip with it on. No, it, you put the temporary tire on, so then you can go and fix it, right? Simon Benoit is the temporary tire. He's doing the best he can, but he's not a fourth defenseman, right? So that's my opinion on it. But I think in summation. It, it's time for a different voice, right? Like, I I agree here. I agree here. Um, and if not, who knows? Maybe the Leafs will miss the playoffs, like we mentioned earlier. You can go bet that at plus four fifty if you want to. Uh, over on DraftKings Sportsbook. Um, yeah, that's our that's our presenting sponsor for today's show, DraftKings Sportsbook. We know hockey moves fast but with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. You can score faster than anything happening on the ice. This week, new customers can get 5 bucks and get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Like I mentioned before, that plus 450. If you feel like the, the Leafs are in a not good spot right now, you want to bet them to miss the playoffs, you more you can easily do that over on DraftKings.com. If you think they will make the playoffs, minus 600, that's available too. So uh, yeah, the yes or no, always like those two-way markets uh, betting here in the for teams to make the playoffs. So download DraftKings Sportsbook app with code THPN. New customers get just five bucks and on the NA, excuse me, just bet $5 on the NHL and get 200 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code THPN. The crown is yours. Gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net in New York. Call 8778-HOPE-NEW-YORK or text HOPE-NEW-YORK 477-369 in Connecticut. Help is available for problem gambling call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org please pay the responsibility on behalf of Blue Hill Casino and Resort 21 plus age areas by jurisdiction void in Ontario bonus bets expire 160 hours after issuance see dkng.com slash hockey for eligibility and deposit restrictions terms and responsible gambling responsible gaming excuse me resources NHL and NHL Shield are registered trademarks of the NHL Hockey League if you want to go bet it Go bet it on DraftKingsSportsbook.com. Use go THPN here. Um, quickly, a little bit of a... I don't know if this is breaking news, but it's something that I just saw right now. Apparently, the Leafs held a meeting to address some of the issues that have occurred during their four-game losing streak, which is something here. I don't know if you've uh, if you've seen that. I did. I couldn't even remember. What was it about? To a, Definitely not to a players-only address- meeting. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, I, I maybe maybe it's not new, and I missed this on Twitter earlier. But uh, I I didn't. I saw that they held a meeting. I couldn't even tell you what it was about. Um, true. You know, might have might have been a nothing burger then. Um. All right. Yeah. Uh, there are rumors from Spit and Chicklets that Patrice Bergeron's coming back. So that's uh, that's fun. Love to see what? that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Because people have been seeing him skating in the Boston area, and he's like, "Oh no, it's to stay fresh for alumni games." It's like, bro, you retired last year, <laughs> so uh, that's that's the the that's the chatter that's going on around there. So, you know, interesting. Like that's where maybe it's false hope, but I look at the Bruins forward roster, 
And on their second line, they have Danton Heinen. Yeah. How can how can we not compete with that? How can the Leafs not compete with that? I, what I think was every seven... Bruins fan saying when the Leafs signed Tyler Bertuzzi in the summer? They said, shit. I what? like Tyler yeah. Bertuzzi. Yeah. And now, like, it seems like we're almost wasting him. Like, it's... Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's it's a tough spot for us to be in. Um, I so, guess... I don't know if we have anything else to address. Would, I, I you, guess... would you trade the first round pick that the Leafs have? Oh, that's so tough. Right for now, a rental. no. Right now, no. no. Hell no. For a rental, no. Definitely not for a rental. Okay. Um, definitely not for a rental because I think I think if I'm true living, I look at like the, the 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 cap the cap sheet we have right now. I look at our cap situation mm-hmm. and I say, hey, right, we we are gonna we are gonna get a lot more clarity after next year that's kind of the, that that is what we wait for we wait for next year to kind of do this stuff unless i guess unless the team on the ice shows you that hey we we need help here we we're good enough to do this we just need a little bit of a push i know then we do that but i i feel like they haven't shown enough on the ice to do that yet yeah that it's just the unfortunate part is there are holes to this roster that cannot be filled with what you have in, like perfectly filled yes. with what you have in terms of the assets that's a great way to put that's it. just that's, that's just plain and simple. So do you the, try to fill some of them, right? Because you get more clarity at the what after this summer. Oh, will Mitch extend? Will John Tavares take a discount? Whatever. Okay. If Mitch extends, okay, whatever. He extends for X price. What if the wheels just fall off the wagon for Tavares? That's not far fetched. That's what that's it's what really saying. looking like it right now. That power play, that guy's me. eating pucks along the wall and then just losing them. And also, the power play, Morgan Riley needs to start moving that puck a lot quicker. He is so slow moving the biscuit and it is really interrupting the flow. So I was going to ask you this before we, before we hopped off here. Are you concerned about John Tavares? I know he's been pointless in the last five games. Um, it'll, so- it'll start to tick up. Yeah. He has gotten... He has created some chances. Like He does look... Kind of, he looks slow, right? Like slower yeah. than the beginning of the season. It seems like, yeah. but maybe that's just my eyes doing something to me. But against the Detroit game, he fed Nick Robertson. That was a great chance. That almost ended up in the back of the net. There was a slap shot from Tavares. It was Nylander from behind the net to Tavares. Slap shot saved by Skinner. I haven't mentioned it this episode. Skinner was very good in that game. There was more than a few chances that should have ended up in the back of the net. He made some huge saves. His po- his posture is very very good. His movements were pretty good, like especially that Matthews to Holmberg one timer. I thought that was in the back of the net for sure, off a off a turnover too. That was a fantastic save. The save on Giordano too, same thing. Stayed square, stayed poised, was able to make that save. Puck went into the corner too to boot. He was awesome. Um, yeah. So yeah, to get back to my point, Tavares is shooting at like two percent right now in the year twenty twenty four or something like that. Mm-hmm. It will start to tick up a little bit, but. You know, I looked at it from last year, actually. His five-on-five production is, like, the same as what it was at this time last year. So, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Well, I, th- I think old, the problem but... is, is the, the power play production was really elevating him last year. And now that he, he did, does, yeah. now that he's not getting, now that he's not one of the three players who gets a point on a power play point that we, we've been scoring recently, it seems like that's kind of shifted to Morgan Riley being that, the guy who's getting those points. It's like, now we're... You know what I mean? Like the way we talk about him is. What was the last now. time they scored a power play goal, though? It's been a question. few games. Feels like, feels like it's been a they while. They didn't score one last night because they only got one power play. They did not score one against Detroit. They had three or four power plays there. And I thought a couple, again, the Nylander crossbar should have went in, but it is what it is. They did not score one against Cal- Colorado because they got only one power play somehow by the. Anyways, not going to talk about officiating, but that was horrible. They only got one power play there, and it came at the end of a Matthews shift. So they only got the first power play got less than a full minute out there. Um, the Islanders, they only had one power play. They didn't score on that one either. So it's been a few games since they scored a power play goal, although it's only been like six total chances, seven total chances. Yeah, they're still at 25%, though, which is like around. I know you're just talking about the last game, but just like, mm-hmm. which is basically where we were at last year, we were at like 27 Yeah, three for so. three against the. Against the Sharks yeah. will help you help boost that <laughs> yeah, one. That's true. That's but, true. Um, 
Do you have any thoughts on Martin Jones? Stick with it, ride the ship. Just hope that he doesn't ride him till the wheels fall off, and hope that when the wheels fall off, that Joseph Wall is right there to pick, yeah pick them back up. I think Samsonov was okay against Detroit. Definitely not the reason you lost. A um, couple questionable decisions, especially on the second goal, but it was a good start. Hopefully, I think they're going to start him against the Flames, um, or if not the Flames against the Kraken. So we'll see there. I think he definitely gets in one of those few games. Um, Martin Jones's play uh, has been good enough to allow, like he's not kept you in games. He's made some good saves. I realized the, the dry settle goal was terrible last game. I was not good. Uh, he's, you know, the Colorado game was just tough. Um, what I don't think that was any of those were his fault, but he's making good saves to me. Yeah, this is not like external. Whoa, Martin Jones. This is he's playing decent enough hockey to give you a chance to win each game. Yeah, that's my opinion right now. That's more than I thought we'd ever have to ask from Martin Jones, but so far it's been solid. He's making good saves as well, like noticeably. Like wow, that was that was a great save. Um, Samsonov. Just hope for the best, baby. Hope for the best because he's going to get in one of these games soon. Uh, but yeah, Wool is about, I'd say, a month out, maybe less from returning to the ice. He was on the ice. So I, d- I doubt he comes back before the All Star break. Yeah. Um, lines um, for next game. What are your predictions? Holmberg, Matthews, Marner. I think that's sticking no matter what. Holmberg, Holmberg Matthews, Marner. I think, I think we're just going to let's go crazy here. McMahon slash Robertson to Ferris Nylander. Definitely not McMahon. No, it would definitely it would be if I think Nyes gets scratched next game and they put okay. Robertson in. Okay, so that's my prediction. Do they try Robertson Tavares Marner? I mean Robertson Tavares Nylander again. They've tried that in the past. Um, we'll see. Maybe I think they go back to Bertuzzi Tavares Nylander to be honest, and then try Robertson, Domi, Yarncroc. What I would like to see, I'm not a big split Matthews Marner up guy. They're clicking right now too. I would like to try like Bertuzzi, Matthews, Nylander. And then on the second line, you do Robertson, Tavera. No, you can't do that because Marner takes tougher assignments. (laughs) Never mind. It's tough. But yeah, I think, Bertuzzi, I think Matthews, Nylander, I think would be a great line. I think you should try that one out. Bertuzzi, say that Matthews, again? Bertuzzi, Matthews, Nylander. Okay. I would really like I, to see that. Yeah, that could that could be interesting. Um, mm-hmm. At least play the Flames tomorrow tomorrow night or tonight, depending on tonight. when you're depending on when you're when listening this to this. Out. And then so that's Thursday, and then we have the back to back again, Canucks. And Kraken, uh, back to back Saturday, Sunday. Then we play the Jets on the at home. Sorry, Jets at home next Wednesday. We'll be back here, and then one game before the All Star break, get the Jets on the road, and then we'll have our little home and home against the Jets. Isn't that kind of odd? No, sorry, we're on the road. We're home, then on the road against the Jets. It's weird. Yeah, a home and home against the Jets. Yeah, it's so weird. It's so weird because we also go on like a Western road trip before that, then come home and then go back to the West. Like it just like I know it's not that far west, but just what's the difference? Like why didn't we just like you know take the plane ride back, land in Winnipeg, play there, then plane ride? Anyways, it's uh, (laughs) the NHL. I don't think I don't know how many people get this joke, but you could the joke there is Winnipeg doesn't have an airport. Um, I don't know why it's a joke. I guess. it's just because it's so small, dumb. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Something like that. So a lot of people make that point. joke. I don't. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so not the easiest schedule coming up. Couple ge- couple teams coming up that are on heaters right now. The Flames are playing better hockey. The Canucks are on, on a shooting bender for half a season. It now seems the Kraken are also on a shooting bender. Now it seems too. they not. It seems they are on a shooting bender. They are eight. And two in their last 10, they were on an eight game winning streak. And then they've lost two in a row. It seems 
Uh, but nevertheless, a good hockey team there too. And then you got the Jets who are like first in the West, if not way, way up there. They're playing some excellent hockey too. So not an easy stretch of games. You really start. I realize I've said the some bounces aren't really going your way. You really need to start scoring some third period goals though. Plain and simple. You need to start next game, this game. Period. Please, for the love of God, score a third period goal. Yeah. That's my thoughts. Fair enough. So tough couple stretch, tough little stretch coming up. We'll be oh, back yeah. next week, probably doing before, some more trade targets. Be- before we close out here, excuse me. Um, the Leafs need to win minimum three games, or else this this All Star break for them will literally be hellacious for the three guys or four guys that are going to the All Star break. Because you know every single every single question for that those guys is going to be about the team and all this shit. Like you already know, it's in it's taking place for those who don't yeah. know in Toronto, which means the media is going to be all over them here. So local media is never really has never really been our friend. It's going to be we we like. For the same sanity of the players going of the least players going to the All Star game, hopefully the team can like rally behind them right now and uh, yeah. and pick up a couple wins down the stretch here before the ease the, the sh- five game stretch ease the ship before or what's what steady the rudder exactly steady the rudder that's a good one before the All Star break get a, get everything back on track get a nice little cushion between Detroit and Tampa Bay can they do it do you think they can. Yes, I think they can. Same here. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Go, Lee Scope.